good afternoon everybody it's really heartening to see the title that disruptions in the supply chain management all of you are aware that uh, dedicated freight corridor has been thought of as a disruptive mechanism in the entire logistics in the transport industry genesis of dedicated freight corridor is basically aimed at attending or alleviating the miseries plaguing the transport sector we had the rail share dipping and lose of I mean losing about 45 billion a year due to inefficiency in the logistics network ranking very low and spending 14% of our gdp on the logistics though we are the fourth largest rail network in the world this is the high density corridor which was plagued with congestion which was having problems of delays unmet demand and the biggest thing is the 16 kilometers 16% of the route kilometers carried almost 58% of the freight and 52% of the passenger traffic even if you compare the road network the national highways along this corridor corridors they only can carry about 40% of the road freight and these created the major problems of transit and economic survey has put this into the perspective by saying an investment of 1 rupee in the economy uh, into the railways will bring about five times the returns so we have in 2006 it was conceptualized let's have dedicated freight corridors which will be assuring a faster and a sure transit in a safer and convenient way economic environmentally superior and with low social cost cheaper and ease of doing business should improve when we talked about uh, the basic objectives to increase the modal share by creating additional rail infrastructure and reduction in the unit cost we have focused approach for segregating the dedicated that uh, freight infrastructure we will give the dedicated timetable services and decongestion of major roadways also of course some of the salient features i have just narrated may not be relevant at this stage but then the huge infrastructure which we have created this is a conceptual map from uh, ludhiana to dankuni in uh, west bengal from jawaharlal nehru port trust to dadri these two are uh, the first uh, freight corridors which have been conceptualized and we have almost come to the final stages of completion we have already completed 331 kilometers of bhapu to khurja in 2020 honorable prime minister has inaugurated that section later on we have now connected the western uh, dedicated freight corridor rewadi to palanpur where we have connected to the gujarat ports and now the movement of exempt traffic has been given a big push we have also commissioned uh, some up to mehsana in eastern we have again connected another uh, 250 uh, kilometers uh, between uh, mogal sarai to chiralapattu and as well as new kanpur to new shijatpur which has given immense relief to the entire railway network we have brought in operational efficiency by i can only say the average train speeds in the entire eastern sector is touching for 62 plus and in western it is about 54 plus now the redeeming features is that the entire uh, turn round of the entire railway assets has improved now the average transit time Uh, between uh, the points has been drastically reduced now some of the terminals connected to us have uh, registered almost uh, double digit growth as seen by container corporation ultra tech as well as jk lakshmi cements now some of the transit times have down, gone down significantly and in spite of increasing in the number of uh, trains the average running time before the dfc uh, operations was about 34 hours which has been brought down to 11 hours now now what is the operational efficiency the impact has been seen is that on ncr that is north central railway and north western railway these trains which have come on to dfc 
have decongested those railways and they have allowed the passenger trains to run faster or whatever trains have to run there, they have been running faster. Now, what is the vision that we have? We have created the supply of the adequate capacity, 120 trains each way, whereas the present capacity is about 40 trains. So we have built this capacity for the future. Consistency, because of the supply availability of the paths, number of trains that we can run, we have made it possible to run trains according to the paths which we fix, and we are able to adhere to the timelines. So the transit assurance and also the real-time visibility of the cargo is made available. We have made the stocks better for high-speed runs, and the safety has been ensured by developing certain machine vision inspection systems. We have also gone in for cyber signaling, track management, predict predictive and preventive measures of uh, management. We have made every station a business activity center. So we have got the traffic models and some of the strategies like trucks on train and some of the things like triple stack containers and cube containers, which are for the future have already been experimentally tried in our system. We are coming out with a door-to-door -door model wherein I'm glad to say that Amazon has been handling, uh, developing the model along with us, and we are taking the help of uh, many of the uh, uh, aggregators in the field. We are looking forward to developing a full uh, chain of uh, supply chain management professionals, first mile and last mile connectivity service providers in this model. Trucks on train, which we have introduced as an iconic product in our uh, system, wherein the trucks which have been going long distance need to, they would take a lift on our wagons and we carry them in various destinations. We have seen to it that the number of uh, the benefits which have come is tremendous and that sustainability is now what we are looking at in reducing the carbon emissions of the entire country as a whole. The number of uh, demands which have come for introduction of this sector, this particular service in various sectors is encouraging. Now, some of the things that we are looking at is basically cargo consolidation, assurance of wagon availability, timetabled and reliable transit, and real-time tracking, all with the IT enabling systems. Some of the special wagons, then some of the brownfield and greenfield improvements and the infrastructure investments. These are going to come up in a big way. Now, when I saw that uh, title which was there in the beginning, that innovation, disruptive innovations coming into logistics and supply chain management, my heart swelled with pride because we are now going to be the agents of this, in particularly the supply chain and logistics management by virtue of our lesser cost and the faster movement, which was an assured transit times, which was a sort of a alien thing in any Indian railway transport or Indian transport system. We are now going to bring in those things. And when we look at the synchromodality, somebody has pointed out uh, that we would like to have multimodal chains, multimodal operators. We are now providing a platform where on this entire dedicated freight corridors, there are multimodal logistics parks which are going to come up and the connectivities to the existing industrial corridors, industrial houses, which will enable the customers to move their products in a seamless way with a lot of ease in business because the entire thing is going to be an IT-based system with less human interference. The biggest thing which, of course, I would like to point out that when I looked at, again, I am coming back to that because that caught my attention as soon as I came, that is disruptions and disrupting innovations in the supply chain management. What exactly was plaguing the supply chains? Was one is capacity, second is the attitude. Capacity, we are able to provide the capacity augmentation. Second, which we thought is that, yes, this is the attitude which we would like to uh, change breaking the shackles. For long, we have been associated, at least from the service which, which from where I come, Indian Railways, we have been associated with the age-old system of tariffs, classification of the commodities, and classification-based tariffs, which have put a sort of shackles. 
Now this is the time maybe we are looking at breaking those shackles and going by the capacity charging. So those are the disruptive innovations which are in the future next one year. So the previous panelists have said that the next one year is going to be exciting. I'm all the more exciting. I'm going to give you that exciting future because we are going to break those shackles of tariffs, of costs, of time transit, uh, transit times, and the quality of service assurances. Now, what we are looking at is also that one station on product policy, Gati Shakti policy initiatives already taken. We are looking at partnerships with wagon manufacturers, container train operators, e-commerce uh, firms. What we have is the futures of road railers and the trucks on train. We have the potential. We are covering almost uh, four states in WDFC and seven states in EDFC. Each district action plan has been coordinating and we have been going through. The biggest uh, change which we find uh, or we are adopting is going to the customers. Now the process of contacting the individual customers and giving them a unique solution to come out with uh, some of the uh, logistics, unique, unique logistics solution uh, is on and we will be in touch with many of the people who are within the reach. Uh, we have got IT backing in such a way that uh, the people whom we have recruited have shown so much of enthusiasm. We have developed the in-house IT applications at no cost. And we have developed almost what some of the, I'm proud to say that uh, what Indian Railways has taken some time to develop as a newcomer. We started and achieved the same result in six months, all with in-house talent. Now, this is what our uh, roadmap. Basically, our movement is going to be revolutionized through development of the pallet smalls wagon movement, which has been excluded by the Indian Railways over the years because of the block rake movement. We are being tying up with e-commerce people. And of course, our emphasis is on solar, wind, renewable energy. So environment and sustainability is the there as the plank for us to remain. Some of the, just recap, reliability, yes. Availability is available. Safety and transit assurance. These are the going things which are going to make it. The oft repeated statement, just in time, to be made into a reality rather than remaining a cliche. So dedicated freight corridor is now going into that particular realm where it will make it a reality. Some of the market speaks, I think this is too much of a boasting and no need to put that. Some of the things which we just kept it that we will be within three years of our uh, starting, we will be able to achieve about 163 million tons of traffic with existing private sidings and others which we are developing. So this is the incremental traffic. So future corridors, this is the face of the future corridors, future freight railways of India. So thank you.